to speak with you very briefly and then I want to lead you to pray. On a message I have titled, I shall not labor in vain. That message has been ringing in my heart for days now. And I feel compelled to share it with you. Get ready to pray. I shall not labor in vain. I want you to say it after me. I, Olufunka Felix Adejuma, shall not labor in vain. You didn't say it as if you know what you're saying. I want you to say it. I, Olufunka Felix Adejuma, shall not labor in vain. This third time, I want you to say it convincingly. I, Funka Felix Adejuma, shall not labor in vain. In Bible days, I saw people that labored in vain. And I'm sharing about six of them with you this morning. In a contemporary world, I have seen people and I'm seeing people that have labored and are laboring in vain. They work and work and work and work. And when it is time for the harvest to come, when it is time for them to be blessed, when it is time for their music to be played, they are nowhere to be found. Have you not heard? Have you not attended, you know, wedding ceremonies? Where they will say, shall we rise up in honor of daddy? Or mommy, Mrs. So-and-so, that should have been here today. I was, you know, at a wedding ceremony in Ibadan. My husband was the one preaching. And I, and I followed him there. Fantastic wedding. And at a point, the groom began to weep. That boy wept and wept and wept. I've never seen that in my life. His eyes became red on the day that he was celebrating. And he had to be consoled. His bride was consoling him. Because that boy said his mother labored to see him become. And today his music was being played. His song was being sung and the mama was not there. And another person tied headgear and took mama's place and was happy. And this boy was crying. In your life, you shall not labor in vain. You don't understand what I'm telling you this morning. In the name of Jesus, you shall not labor in vain. You will be alive when it is time to play your music. You will be alive when your children's song is being played. In the name of Jesus. Take your seats. There are several scriptures I'll be referring to this morning, even if I don't read them. The first one I want to begin with is you know, Saul's servant in 1 Samuel chapter 9. Saul was to become a king. He didn't even know. He wasn't prepared for it. His father's asses got missing. You know the story very well. Let me just refresh your mind. And the father said to him, go look for the asses. So, Saul went out and a servant went with him. They searched everywhere. They were in about four cities. And at a point in time, they were tired. At a point in time, Saul said, let's go back because I'm sure by now my father will have been concerned about us. I'm sure he will have forgotten about the lost asses. I'm more important to him. Let's go. And then the servant is even nameless. The Bible does not give us his name in 1 Samuel chapter 9. The Bible says, the servant said to Saul, I know that there is a prophet in this city. Who tells a man and shows a man the direction in which he should go? Let's go seek him. He's a seer. And the Bible says in those days, prophets were referred to as seers. People that see beyond what others could. And Saul, being a bona fide Jew that understands spiritual principles, said, What shall we give to the man of God? Because our bread is spent. There is nothing in our purses. And the slave, the servant said, I have here in my hand, in my pocket, a quarter of a shekel. Shekel is the currency in Israel. Just like we have the Nigerian Naira. We have Israeli shekels. So he said, I have a quarter here. And that we shall give to the servants of God. If you get home, study that scripture. It's a very long passage. And the Bible tells me that both of them went. And when they met Samuel, Samuel received them because God had prepared Samuel for that encounter. And they ate. When it was now time to be rewarded, that scripture baffles me. The Bible says, Prophet Samuel said to Saul, bid the servant to go. And Samuel 
and Saul began to chant. The man that gave a quarter of a shekel no longer belonged to their company. You see, the palace is for very, very special people. When you get to the palace, you know, there's what we call palace manners, you know. And in case the, pa the servant was doing, I said, move, 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 excuse me, move. You don't belong here, you know. Um, you see, some people are not really whatever. I just need to let you know that God has decided to put you on the throne. Even though you are the youngest, you are the smallest, you do not qualify, but you see, but you see. Who gave the shekel? Who found the throne? Who gave the money? Who found the throne? That's why I'm praying for you this morning that when it is time to be rewarded, you shall be alive. That was the last time we heard about that servant. Every other thing in that story surrounded Saul. For 40 years, Saul enjoyed what another person planted. For 40 years running, everything was about King Saul, King Saul, King Saul, King Saul, King Saul. We don't even know whether Saul rewarded that servant. Did Saul have two heads? Was Saul not a man like that man? But heaven recognized somebody by reason of favor. You know what our bishop tells us? To be favored means to be served first, even though it may not go round. This morning you shall not labor in vain. As you have come to church today when they are discussing kingdom matters, throne matters your name shall be mentioned you shall be recommended for the throne somebody shout hallelujah number two there's another man in the bible, the bible calls him Jephthah in the book of Judges chapter number 11 I studied that scripture last week and I had to go back to it again to read. Now listen, Bishop has, you know, he's one of his favorite <laughs> um, characters in the Bible. I've had him preach and preach and preach over this man. This man was the son of an harlot. He wasn't a bona fide child. Thank God for the constitution that he said that there's no bastard anywhere. In fact, when I, when I move around and I see motherless home, I hate that word. There's no child that is motherless. A mother had that child. But you see, in Bible days, if you have a child and you were not married or you don't live in that man's house, you're not legal. You're not a legal child. You're not a bona fide child. So that was what happened to this man called Jephthah. When the father died, the, his siblings, his half-brothers and half-sisters or what have you said, you don't belong to us. Get out. You are the son of an harlot. So they pushed him out. And only God knows what happened to that man. He suffered and suffered, but God remembered him. And then Israel became oppressed. Judges chapter 11. Israel became oppressed and Israel needed help. And the Bible says that the same people that cast him out went to him and said to him, we want you to be our captain. And Jephthah said, but you sent me out. You sent me packing. You called me up manner of names. Why do you want me now? And they begged him. So he decided to come back. And God gave him victory. He, he said to God, Father, as I'm going to this battle now, I want you to favor me. I want you to help me. And I make a vow today, God. By the time I return, the first thing that meets me, I will offer to you. And God gave him favor and God anointed him for the battle and God empowered him and he succeeded. He led Israel. Israel won the fight. Israel won the war. Israel won the battle. And the man was returning rejoicing and he was happy. And guess what? Who met him? Who was the first person to meet him as he was about to enter his house? The, his only child. Judges chapter 11 his only child and he burst into tears and he said why have you troubled me oh girl i have opened my mouth and i cannot return beloved and i sat down and I began to meditate on that scripture why is it that that girl didn't go visiting his friend her friend that day 
Why did that girl not remain in the toilet or in the bathroom that day? And let one meet him. It was a what to do, man. Why did 15 cows not meet him? His only child. The reason why he was laboring. The proof that he ever existed. The extension of his life met him and he said, there is nothing I can do. You have to be offered to the Lord. As far as I'm concerned, that was a labor loss. Jephthah, fantastic man. But I don't like the way that story ended. Whether the girl died, because there is a controversy over that by Bible historians. Some people feel that she, he, she was offered to the Lord. She, did, she wasn't killed, but she was not allowed to marry. Even if she was not allowed to marry. That means Jephthah, wait, is that one good? That means Jephthah had no gen, genealogy anymore. Nobody. After the girl died, that was the end of Jephthah. No grandchildren, nothing. And in case she was killed, wow. You will not labor in vain. Having walked for years, having served God with tears day and night, having swept the church, having made a lot of publicity about Christianity, having sung in the choir, having paid your tithe, giving offerings, serving God. At the end of the day, it will not be in vain for you. The third person I want to share with you this morning is in the book of Genesis and her name is Mrs. Abraham. Sarah. This woman got married. Beautiful woman. In two chapters of the Bible, the Bible, you know, she was referred to as a very beautiful woman. In fact, she was so beautiful at a point, two occasions, her husband had to tell her, please tell them you are my sister so that they will not take you from me. Beautiful. And then she got married. Everything went well. But what she did not plan for began to tamper with what she planned for. Every woman gets married and then she expects certain things in her life. This woman, no child. And she had this slave. Whether she was prettier than her, I wouldn't know. But one day, you know, I've said this before. She said to her husband, the way we are going, I don't think we can have a child. I think God has forgotten us. In case you're here this morning and you're looking at me or you're listening to me on the tape, God may not be instant, but God is constant. Delay is not denial. You will soon laugh. God is coming. We just had a noise recently, last week, in the Agape camp. One of our sisters, we don't want to share the testimony with you yet until it is full. She's been waiting on the Lord for the blessing of the womb for 17 years. And that day when Ebenezer Obey came, her sister came to whisper to me here and I fell down on my face. Now she's pregnant. 17 years. I thought somebody would shout and be excited. This God of Agape is at work. One of our pastors, he was 12 years. There was nothing people did not say. Today he has a daughter. This is the latest testimony in Agape. 17 years of waiting. She can't come to church because she's in bed now. I said, just don't, don't carry any bucket. Oh. Just don't fetch any water. Let your husband be doing it. Just lay dear. Just lie down dear. I said, I plead the blood upon your placenta. I plead, he says, it's enough, mommy. I said, it's not enough. I plead the blood upon everything. Nothing will happen. Do you know what it means to wait on the Lord for seven months? To be married for seven months? I waited for five months. And every month I would cry to my husband. He just come again. I don't know. They would think I was wayward. And my husband would say, no, we just got married. Five months only. So when they call for people that wait, she like come out. You don't know what it means to wait. Your faith is tested. Your faith is tried. You battle with in-laws. You battle with family members. You battle with the devil. Your mind is telling you something. Do you think God? God comes late when he wants to come big. God is coming. He's on the way. Very soon we'll celebrate with you on the birth of your twins. One boy, one girl, two girls or two boys. We will celebrate with you very, very soon. The God of Agape is still at work. Your own may not even be babies. Whatever you are believing God for. From the month of April, oh house of Agape, possibility ground, hear me.
me. It is celebration time. Whatever you are believing God, expect double, 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 double. The God of Adeju shall visit you. Write it down. Believe it. Write it on the tablet of your heart. From April 1st, double, 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 double. You need a job. You will have to choose between two. Your finances are get, is getting low. Get ready because God is about to show up. Tell your neighbor, it's celebration time at the possibility ground. So she said to her husband, go and sleep with my house help. She's my own. I bought her. Because in Bible days, you could own permanently a house help. She's my own. Whatever baby she gives back to is my own. But it's a lie. There's a difference between your own and our own. So this woman got pregnant and she began to misbehave. Anyone that is hearing me this morning and you are an ingrate, be careful. People that have helped you now that you have traveled to Lome, you begin to spit through your nostrils. Oh, sure. <laughs> can no longer kneel down to greet them. You can no longer respect them. Be careful. The Bible says as soon as that woman realized she was pregnant, she became funny. Then she was cast out of the house because every woman is a bee. Every woman has a minimum of two sides. A bee can produce honey and a bee can sting. As fantastic as, as Sarah was, she stung her. And the Bible says that she, she made life bitter for that woman and she was cast out. After she was cast out, the angel of the Lord met her and said, Go back and submit yourself to your mistress. So she had a baby. And the rest is history. Anyway, you know God had Sarah's prayer. And Sarah had Isaac. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh. At the age of 90. This God, what can he not do? Medical doctors that are in the house today. Medical personnel, give me the scientific explanation for that. A woman ovulated at the age of 90, delivered a baby, tell me the medical science that can prove that. How old are you? You are believing God and the doctors have told you some nonsense. When spiritual sense is speaking, medical science must shut up. Don't believe the lies of the doctors. Those reports will you believe? Believe God. And the doctor takes your BP and says, say, No, it's not my own. It is your own that entered it. Doctor, so take it. Don't collect what is not your own. But go back home and rest. You shall not labor in vain. And the Bible tells me that in Genesis chapter 24. This only child of Sarah's was getting married. And Sarah was in the grave. This same Sarah prepared meals for God and the Trinity, the angels when they visited. This same Sarah received strength to conceive. This same Sarah labored. This same Sarah threw a party for her baby. But when that baby's music was to be played, she was in the grave. You will not believe it that it was Abraham alone that saw Isaac's wife. Don't tell me it was age because Abraham was older than Sarah. But that woman labored in vain. Can you imagine when the day Rachel jumped down? Was it no Rebecca? jumped down from the from the donkey can you imagine if sarah had welcomed her welcome to my family you are the miracle i've been waiting for i waited for your husband for 25 years so you are the one that will console me you are the nourisher of my old age but she was in the grave god i don't want my life to end that way therefore i pray unto you today oh god that myself and everyone listening to me today shall not labor in vain Number four, there's another woman called Rachel, whose son became the prime minister in Egypt. 
and that boy became so blessed he had access to cars in those days they didn't have automobile but donkeys and wagons represented that and when this boy was blessed you know the story very well you know how Rachel suffered she too waited on the Lord for some time before she delivered Joseph and later she delivered Benjamin it was when she was going to give back to Benjamin that she died every pregnant woman here you will not die without pregnancy every single person single ladies listening to me in the name of Jesus when it is time for you to go to the labor room I went four times and I returned that shall be your story you belong to my loins you will go back and you will return in the name of Jesus anyone that will make a mistake the day you will deliver I command that person to go and leave you think God doesn't send people and leave I told you one day I was in the battle a couple called me they needed a license from the federal government for their television station they needed a cable license and I said I'll be visiting the battle I'm going to come to your office and I went there because this particular man just refused to give them to approve the license and I went to that office and I went through the studio and I began to pace and I decree in the name of Jesus that that man will go and leave I command the favor of God upon this office and you know what God did the following week that man received a letter that he needed to go on compulsory leave he left and a Muslim was brought to replace him to deputize for him and within four days the Muslim worked on the file approved the license and on the fourth day it was discovered that that letter that was sent to the man was wrong so they wrote another letter to him that that leave was a mistake he should come back but our certificate had gone what can God not do anyone that will be an agent of the devil the day you need help I command that person to go and leave beloved I encountered God before I came home those of you waiting on the Lord as far as I'm concerned you're already pregnant so I'm speaking about your tomorrow you will carry that pregnancy to full time one lady my husband knows her she waited for years I think 12 years or so and eventually miraculously she got pregnant and delivered this baby and she was mismanaged and the baby died that day in that hospital as I'm speaking to you now that happened about 4 or 5 years ago she's still to be pregnant so when I'm praying for you about how you will deliver I know what I'm talking about I used to have a lecturer the same thing happened to her that lady was 47 or 45 before she got married and each time I took, you know, after the lectures, I would go to her office. We would lie on the floor. My lecturer and myself, we would pray and pray and pray until God brought a miracle and she got married. After the marriage, we were believing God for the blessing of the womb. I had passed out. And then she would call me, we would pray. And then one day she called me and said, I'm pregnant. My God, my world turned around. And we didn't get in touch. The next time I would see her, I said, why is the baby? He said, ah, I was mismanaged. The baby died. The day I was to deliver, I labored for three days. I said, why did they allow you to labor for three days? Could they not have sectioned you? Who tells you that CS is, is of the devil? No. You can do elective. And as I'm speaking to you now, she's still believing God. So I travel to your tomorrow. After that miracle, it shall be preserved. Those of you getting married, in the name of Jesus, we will not wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. God will open doors for you in the name of Jesus woman i am on a rescue mission today we will not lose you we will not lose the baby we will not lose your husbands thank you one day that if there a woman just had a baby and her husband came to pick her everybody was rejoicing you know what it means when you have your baby your first baby and you won't believe it the man put her in the 504 car drove out of the hospital and the doctor gave them a prescription and while they got there the man came out of the car the woman held the baby the flask the basket everything was at the back of the car and she ran he the man went to the opposite um, shop a pharmacy to buy the prescriptions the drugs and while he was crossing the woman was watching a tipper crushed him true life story not African movie what is not 
good needs prayer, but it is what is good that needs more prayers. Crushed him in the presence of his wife. So when you deliver, you will be alive. The baby will be alive. Your husband will be alive. Somebody getting something this morning. You say, Pastor has not even read the paper. Sorry, read the Bible. It is the word I'm speaking to. It is the Bible I'm telling you now. Sarah was in the grave. When her only child got married. Was it not a guy that became the mother-in-law? Of course. She was in the house. And same thing with Rebecca. Was it not Leah? Because the Bible says that Jacob said when he was going to die, bury me beside Leah. Where, I bear, where Abraham and his wife were buried, where Isaac and his wife were buried. So I have a feeling that Leah traveled in that wagon with Jacob and she was buried on the way. But at least she was there for some time. She enjoyed some things. Whereas Rebecca had died or Rachel had died before Joseph even became anything. When I'm praying, I tell God, though, I joined my husband to pay school fees. I gave salt to these children. My husband doesn't know what it means to put them in the womb. They disfigured me. Pimples everywhere. Come and see me. My husband didn't understand that one, though. God, I put a goosey and vegetable together. Days when there was nothing. I help the children with assignments. When they are getting married, let my headgear too be there. Oh, let me be present. There was a time the devil was bombarding my mind with death. All kinds. I'm being real with you. You think pastors too are not tempted. Every thought was about death. Supposing you travel and you don't return. Supposing, supposing. You know what I did? I began to listen to the word of God. Then I began to take practical steps. What did I do? I went to the market and I bought big, big pots. You know the one they use when you are doing something. Big, big ones. I put them where my dogs were. So every morning when I'm passing, I say, I'm going to use that to cook when my children are getting married. I'm going to use that to cook when my children, until I got over it. Practically. Hallelujah. You shall not labor in vain. The day your Joseph will send you a wagon, you will ride in it. It wasn't Jacob alone that suffered that labored but beloved he entered that wagon and he was waving hello <laughs> see you i'm going to egypt and the thing was going where was the mother mother was in the grave termites were dealing with mommy in spite of all the labels that will not be your story did you see the shakara that jacob did the bible says that jacob met pharaoh and jacob blessed him Jacob didn't allow Pharaoh to bless him. He said, I'm a prophet. It's my son that is in charge here. And the Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. And the Lord. It was a wagon that brought the Baman. Old man enjoyed himself. That man knows Shakara too much. Was it his fault? Because God spared his life. I pray for you this morning. God shall spare your life. You will not be missing. You didn't hear me. I said, You will not be missing. I conclude with this. Moses, Aaron, Miriam. Look at that lady called Miriam. In Exodus chapter 2, chapter 3, she was the one that took care of Moses from mosquito bites, from snake bites, until Pharaoh's daughter located Moses. Do you know, beloved? And when Israel crossed the Red Sea, it was Miriam that led the women's fellowship. She was happy. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders has he thrown into the city. She, she took a tambourine. She was happy. How did she end? Leprosy. Miriam did not get to the promised land. 
Aaron with all his labor did not get to the promised land. But the most painful is Moses. One day, Moses said to God, Am I the one that gave back to these people? This trouble is too much. Take them from me. God said, Don't worry, I'll be with you. I'll do that. that man labored. They abused him. They were going to stone him, all kinds of things. One day, Israel sinned. Moses went to the Lord. He laid prayer. said, God, blot my name from the book of life. With all his life, he served God and he served the people. But one day, God said, The people made you to miss it. So climb on this mountain and see, but you will not taste. He saw the land afar off. He said, God, this land is beautiful. He's flowing with me. Please, please, God. God said, don't beg me again. You have labored in vain. He did not see it. I've given you about six or so people now, or seven. And I'm going to lead you to pray. The end of your life shall be better than the beginning. Don't you see that you have labored? Some of you, you don't sleep in class. Read, 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 read. And results will come out. And they will say third class. God forbid. This is very sad, but let me tell you. We were supposed to attend a wedding two weeks ago. We were even sent the reminder a few days before the wedding. Although we knew we would not be able to go, but we would send our gift and all that in the north. Only for us to hear that the bridegroom was shot dead a few days to the wedding. He was a soldier. He was shot by another soldier. Maybe they were playing. Maybe it was an error. Maybe it was, uh, I don't know. Whatever reason, I don't want to know. My sister said, do you know some people will come on that day that they did not remember to send a text to that the wedding has been cancelled. With their headgear and their shoebi. What do you think will be happening in that family now? That is to let you know that a battle is going on. My husband says, life is a fight. He said that you are fighting or somebody is fighting for you. This morning, I want you to fight. I have preached the word of God to you. I want you to fight in prayer. Fight about your present. Fight about your future. Fight for your children. Fight for your children to come. Fight for your grandchildren. Fight for your generation. Pray generationally today. Fight against your past. The reason why some people labor in vain is because it has happened to their father. I was in Abuja a few days ago and a lady came to my office, to my room, to my hotel room. Please don't record this. Her daughter got pregnant at the age of 19. A boy raped her. She was a virgin. Because of the future, a lot of things await the future. And this future is so glorious. Why will you allow five minutes enjoyment to destroy your future? In case there is something that your father did that you are reaping now in this service, fight. Fight for your present and fight for your future. Rise up now and fight in prayer. I stand upon the authority of the word of God to declare that I shall not labor in vain. I cannot hear you pray, not to talk of God. Open your mouth, travel to your past, travel to your present, travel to your future. In this service today, in the name of Jesus, I shall not be like that man in 1 Samuel chapter 9. I shall not labor in vain in that. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You make me feel as if I didn't preach correct to you today. I want you to call the name of Jesus once and open your mouth and pray, pray. Now everybody go. In the name of Jesus, I shall not labor in vain. In my studies, in my work, in my marriage, over my children, I shall not labor in vain. Whatever sin is in my generation, it will not affect me. It will not affect my children. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my future. Hey! 
I shall not labor in vain. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You will pray. Every arrangement of hell to terminate your life before your day of glory, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Haven't you heard that it's not everyone that registers in a school going through the study that finishes? Some people will die before they finish. And some people, when they finish, they die during the National Youth Service Call. We are going to pray that before, in fact, you are going to pray that nothing will take your life, nothing will terminate your life, your, you shall not labor in vain all your labor you will reap the, the fruit of it can you begin to pray in the, over your children over yourself nobody is going to represent you nobody is going to deputize for you nobody is going to stand in for you in the mighty name of Jesus Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Finally, you are going to travel into your future. Every planting of the devil uproot it. Every poison that the enemy wants to introduce into your future, future, begin to uproot it in the name of Jesus. Yes, everything that the enemy is planting into your future, remove it, uproot it in the name of Jesus. Ah!
in jesus mighty name we have prayed this week you shall hear good news again i say that this week you shall hear good news as i was sitting down there i had a good news somebody wrote to me somebody wrote to me said, on behalf of their family they are giving one million for this project hallelujah that is good news to me it's in, it's in my bible i read it i said i want to take the pressure off you I, my family will contribute one million and she wrote, and the person wrote it and gave it to me everyone here you have labored you have prayed your ears are meant to hear good news you will hear good news i said you shall hear good news in your day of glory nobody will take your place in your day of honor nobody shall take your place this world is a battleground i discovered that there's no way you can succeed or survive it without fighting whether you like it or not the enemy the devil goes around with all his wives seeking for who to devour but you shall not be devoured accidents are taking people's life as a matter of as a matter of a fact the 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 life expectancy now has reduced but you shall live long i said you shall live long david ruled for 40 years and he enthroned his own son before he died you your eyes you shall live long and you shall witness the lifting and the elevation of your children in the name of jesus you shall not be a widower you shall not be a widow in the mighty name of jesus can somebody shout it loud amen the battle is won the battle is over hallelujah the battle is over glory to god i am too sure you have been blessed today glory to god in the highest amen please you may be seated